on today's show. I did a full surrender on my knees, and I'm telling you, it was the biggest peace I ever had. It was a forgiving myself, something way back that had been stuck in me, that I, all these wounds, and filled them with Jesus. Welcome to 700 Club Canada, and today we're gonna to be talking about giving God control. And so, Lori, uh, has there ever been a situation in your life where you either needed to give God control or you felt like you were out of control? <laughs> oh, never, Bill. Never, never. I know, exactly right. We're, you know, like, give me an example. Like, what was okay, it? teaching my kids how to drive a car. You have a few kids, you've been through this. Oh. It is nerve wracking. Okay, when you're on the other side, of the, I'm just gonna illustrate to you, yes, yes. you're the driver, yes. and you're like, gripping the dashboard, right? And you've got your foot working the gas and the brake because you're like, you need to stop now. I mean, honestly, it just about put us over the edge. Well, the truth is, I mean, we all want to be in control. Right. And so to let someone else be in control is really hard. And even when we know it's God and we know he has our best, sometimes we just want to do it. I know. Okay, tell me, tell me about your kids. Driving. Well, what was it like? I, I, it, it was it was it was nerve wracking. Yeah. Because again, like uh, you don't want to be overbearing, and yet there's certain things you need to do, like stay on the road. Right. Right. right? <laughs> that that right. are important. Don't cut someone off. Yeah. Slow down at the intersection. Oh, well, I know. Yeah. So I know. yeah, but you know what? They all did fine. Yeah. Yeah. They're all they great all drivers now. I think you're not telling me something. No, I'm, I'm protecting the identity <laughs> and sanctity of my relationship with my children. <laughs> well, I can tell you, right, my, my husband, what he did on their birthday when they turned 16, okay. for their birthday, he drove them to the Ministry of... Um, <laughs> yeah, transportation. There you go, transportation. Yeah, yeah. So like, they yeah. went, I went blank. Uh, so that they could get their license that day. We live in the country. We wanted our kids to drive. Well, good for Just saying. Well, today you'll see how the illusion of control turned Mike's life into chaos. Sounds like driving. <laughs> this famous inventor shares how he finally found the peace he had been looking for his entire life. And we have another incredible story from the movement. You'll see how God is changing lives through Canadians, really, just like you. But first, Ashley thought atheism would bring a new sense of control. This is what she really learned and why she ended up calling on God. Ashley Nall grew up in a Christian home. Following the example of those closest to her, she asked Jesus into her heart when she was a little girl. But she says her decision was a superficial one. At the time when I accepted Jesus, God really wasn't on the forefront of my mind. It was more of just a milestone to get done. I fit in with my beliefs. Uh, You know, I would go to church. I would talk about God. I would claim to be a Christian. But I think inside, I started getting kind of more rebellious. I started questioning more and more if this whole faith thing was for me and if God really was real. In high school, Ashley was bullied and struggled to feel accepted among her peers. In class, she became intrigued with science and the study of the mind. I got an interest in psychology and I would get all these books talking about the power of the mind and I had such a longing to understand how to control my mind and then to be able to control my reality. I didn't have a grip on my life. I felt worthless. In my opinion, like being able to control certain aspects of my life would be beneficial. She also began to question God's existence. By her senior year, she declared herself an atheist. And the more that I got into school and dealt with like some bullying and everything, and some of the people who were labeled as Christians, I just started really thinking, I'm like this, it doesn't make sense to me. One, God doesn't seem real. Two, you know, these people who are Christians, they're not, they're not acting um, in that way. And so I don't want anything to do with this faith. That's when I decided, I'm like, that's it. Like, I no longer believe in God. And I had this false sense of freedom. I was like, I'm finally free. I finally felt in control of my life. I felt like I was making my own independent decisions. And I thought it, it made me intelligent. And I found all my worth in it. But despite her new sense of control, she couldn't find lasting happiness. Actually, when I had first left God and first became an atheist, um, it wasn't only but a few months after that that I was actually diagnosed with depression. I kept a really sick journal about how much like I hated Christianity. I actually got into some toxic relationships and got more into partying and just cussing and just all these things that were never really who I was. In college, Ashley isolated herself from friends while she began delving into New Age practices. Looking for direction in life, she used tarot cards and channeled spirits. I was also involved with spirit spirit guides, which I turned out are just demons on this earth. 
Um, they would show me good visions. They would also show me like dark visions. The spirit guide would just show me things that I didn't want to see and that I didn't need to see. And the things that I could control, they weren't bringing me any like joy. They weren't bringing me peace at all. And so this just led me to to a place where I didn't even want to live anymore. I had ruined my friendships. I wasn't doing my organizations anymore. I, I didn't care about class that much. And at this point, there really wasn't anything to live for. Ashley couldn't seem to escape the suicidal thoughts that came to her mind daily, so she dropped out of college and returned home. She started working, and in her spare time, she posted New Age videos on her YouTube channel. But she couldn't shake depression and increasing panic attacks. A person either brings positive or ne negative experiences into their life. The New Age wasn't working, leaving college wasn't working. Like There was nothing in my life that was going right. I was outside in the midst of a panic attack. Um, I started getting suicidal thoughts because I didn't know how to escape it. In that moment, Ashley realized her life was out of control, and she remembered the God she learned about as a child. All I could really just say was like, God, please, like I, like, I need you. And I called on the name of Jesus because there were times where I thought I was praying to gods during the New Age movement, but it was all false. And so I, I, I called on the one true, the one true living God, and he was already there for me. And the second that I, that I said his name, my whole panic attack just stopped. And like, it just felt, I just felt a, a peace come over me. I and mean, I just started crying and I was like, oh my goodness, like, I'm so sorry, Lord, because he, he made his presence so known, like he touched my heart so deeply. And I, I just, I knew he was real. He just quieted me. He was like, Ashley, like, it's gonna be okay. This time, Ashley was sincere about having a real relationship with God. She connected with a local church and began studying the Bible. As her love for God grew stronger, she let go of all new age practices. After coming into a relationship with the Lord, I have not experienced any anxiety. I have no, I no longer have panic attacks. Um, my depression has been wiped away and I have never haven't been suicidal since either. Um, he's completely filled me with joy and peace. That's a good question. Ashley is still producing YouTube videos, but this time it's all about God's love. She's active in her church and she's returned to college. Ashley is delivered from darkness and today God is her guiding light. In Jesus, I found the most beautiful love. Now I don't want control over my life. I don't want to make decisions without God because I, I know what happens when I make my own decisions. And the, the plans that God has for me are so much better than what I could ever imagine for myself. Well, Ashley really had a journey of discovery, what it really means to be a Christian, a true follower of Jesus. You know, her story really illustrates that you can say that you believe something to be true intellectually, but salvation isn't just intellectual assent to you know even a list of beliefs. It is surrender of your heart and your will. I love what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Now, that might sound like a really heavy thing, but here's the truth of it. Salvation is a free gift, but it requires a person to stop relying on themselves. Stop leading your own life, which is what Ashley did. She wanted control. She took pride in having all the answers, and yet it left her empty. She finally grasped the truth of what it means to take up her cross and follow Jesus. Leave behind your pride and let Jesus lead your life. That's what Ashley learned. You know, this led Ashley to real peace and freedom, and that's what she was looking for. And it led her to what I would say is true faith. See, faith is putting your trust not in an idea, but in a person. Faith is putting your trust in the person of Jesus. Is Jesus who he says he is? It, it, can he do what he says he can do? That's why we surrender our whole life to him. That's why we can say that we will trust him. If you're not sure what you believe or where your faith or trust is, maybe it's all in yourself, call us, 1-855-759-0700. We're here to even answer your questions and help you on your journey. And now here are some basic instructions to get you through difficult situations. When I was growing up, one of my favorite things to do was go fishing with my dad. My favorite part of fishing though, if I'm being honest, 
It was never the fishing part. It was always stopping at this little fishing equipment store place that we'd stop at. And dad would go get all the bait that we needed. And my brother and I, we'd go get all the snacks. Dad would explain the different types of, of baits that we were gonna use to catch different types of fishes. You know, I believe that Satan always uses bait to lure you into a path of destruction. The bait of Satan is out there to, as John 10, 10 says, to steal you and to kill you, and I hate to be graphic, but to destroy you. That's the bait of Satan. But the invitation from heaven is always to bring you into betterness. This is God. This is the message of hope. This is the gospel. You know, I'm thinking about the life of Job. Job experiences the, the hashtag worst day ever. He gets sick, he loses his kids, he loses his reputation, and all this stuff goes bad. And even his own spouse, you know, his wife, the one that's supposed to stand with you and rich and, and, and poor and sickness and health, even his own wife comes to him and she says, Job, please tell me we're not going to church this Sunday. We're not gonna keep praising your God. Job made a decision, I'm not going down this path of bitterness. I'm not going to get angry at God and frustrated at God. Job says things in his resolve like, even if he slays me, I'm gonna praise him. I know my Redeemer lives. Job had this resolve to say, I'm gonna get better from my circumstance. I'm refusing to get bitter. What about you? What about what you're going through? I believe with all my heart that you can get better through your circumstance. You can actually get stronger, you can get wiser, you can get healthier, you can get happier. And I'm not preaching to you out of theory, I'm actually talking to you out of my own life. You know, I've experienced a lot of tragedy. Many of you uh, might know our story, my wife and I. We've got a sick daughter. One of my daughter got sick, and that was, you know, four years ago. We still face it today. I had to make the decision. Am I gonna take the bait of Satan that wants to lure me to offense and bitterness, or am I gonna accept the invitation from heaven that will allow me to get better? I can tell you four years later, we are not bitter but we are better. We're stronger, we're a little softer, we're a little bit more aware of other people's struggles, and it's only because we've heard heaven say, if you'll allow me to, I can actually make you overcome through your tragedy. I'm inviting you to do the same today. Reject the bait of Satan. Say yes to the invitation of heaven. We know that this is a challenging time for many, so we're here to offer you some hope. Join us on the 700 Club Canada from January 11th to 15th for an entire week devoted to the issues facing many Canadians today. We'll be joined by psychologist Dr. Mary Lynn, psychotherapist and mental health specialist Harrison Mungle, and counsellor Andrew Blackwood for an in-depth discussion to equip you to handle issues like stress, depression, and anxiety during these unprecedented times. Don't miss this important week. Join us for the week of of Hope, January 11th to 15th. The more chaotic things got, and the more I came out the other end and could say, look what I went through, that was my self-worth. The chaos in Mike Lindell's life started early. He was seven years old when his parents divorced. I got put into a new school and I was the only kid from a divorced family. It affected me where uh, I felt like I didn't fit in. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I was kind of like an outcast. I would show off to try and fit in. But as much as Mike tried to control his circumstances, he was drawn to things that would control him. By the time he got to high school, he was an alcoholic with a serious gambling addiction. That instant high winning, that appealed to me at a very young age. I wanted to keep in control. I always felt like it was me. I could, I could control the outcomes. Then at 21, he got in over his head, owing $25,000 in gambling debt to the mob. In a desperate move to escape the mob's reach, Mike broke into a convenience store and let himself get caught. It got him into jail, but the shame and embarrassment was overwhelming. So when Mike was released, his friend Dick offered him some cocaine. It gave me some, you know, false courage. I could be 
I felt like I could be myself, I could be more outgoing, I could be the talk, the person I always wanted to be where I, I could be the talk of the crowd. With the cocaine, I could get there instantly and feel like I fit it in. Again, the life of the party, Mike started bartending. Then he met Karen, who was also a functioning addict. And I finally got married, had the kids, I was the biggest businessman. One time I had three bars, but it still wasn't enough for me. Inside, that wasn't enough. It wasn't what I was longing for. I didn't have this peace inside of me. It was a chaos magnified beyond belief, but that's where I lived. I lived in that space, and, that, and that's where I, I thought in my mind, I'm going, nobody's this good at handling all this chaos. Trying to make a living, Mike juggled one business venture after another. Then one night, he had a dream that would make him famous. I got the dream for the pillow in 2004. I invented it then. It took about a year. We were turned down everywhere once it was invented and ended up doing home shows and fairs. But as Mike struggled with getting his new business off the ground and his growing addiction to crack, his marriage collapsed. My wife couldn't take it anymore. She left in the middle of the night, and we were divorced actually within a month. It was the first blow of many. Later that fall, his son moved out, and Mike realized he had driven his family away. Then his old drug buddy dropped in for a visit. And I heard he had found the Lord four years earlier, and he came in from out of nowhere and he said, Dick, I want to know something. Is it boring? And he goes, no, man, it isn't boring. And I had all these questions for him that only he could answer. Then on January 16, 2009, and I said, God, I want to wake up in the morning and never have the desire again. When I quit everything that night and woke up and I was freed of all the, you know, the desire, I'm going, wow, something's different. It was like Groundhog Day. It was like, wow, this is different. And I associated that with being saved. Mike quit drugs cold turkey, and sales for my pillow finally began to climb. Mike's walk of faith was a different story. I used to get anger and not know why I'd get angry and frustrated, and if somebody hit my self-worth button, oh man, you know, it would be bad. Then he met Kendra, a woman whose life centered around her faith in Christ, something Mike struggled to understand. She had that personal relationship, and I could see something was different. It wasn't just believing in God. By 2015, my pillow had become a national phenomenon, and over the next two years, attracted the attention of celebrities, including Don Imus, Stephen Baldwin, and Ben Carson. Mike finally started to understand that God was seeking a relationship with him. I would use these mathematical odds that Jesus does exist. And then it wasn't until, um, you know, things started happening to me in the 2015, 16, 17, that it's impossible that a, a former crack addict is all of a sudden sitting at the, at the White House. It's like, you know, God's setting these things up and putting me in these positions that it's impossible. I think God chasing me all that time and going, I, he's almost there. Then in 2017, Kendra and a friend convinced Mike to attend a conference led by Operation Restored Warrior founder, Paul Lavelle. It was there he finally gave control of his life over to God. I went in there with hope and I just said, God, please show me your real, show me, you know, I want that personal relationship. And, and on the second day on February 18, 2017, I did a full surrender on my knees. And I'm telling you, it was the biggest peace I ever had. It was a forgiving myself, something way back that had been stuck in me that I, all these wounds and filled them with Jesus, filled them with the Holy Spirit. These days, Mike is passionate about helping others find more than just a good night's sleep. He wants them to find the peace that he has in Jesus. Even if you don't think you're an addict and you've been through everything and you just have, you just feel hopeless. Well, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than Jesus. That is the hope. That's the hope of the world. You know, as I was watching Mike's story, I was just reminded that if we try to fill any void or emptiness in our life with anything other than God, it just leads to chaos. Mike said it this way, he said, I feel like I didn't fit in. And so instead of filling that void with God, he tried to fill it with drugs and alcohol, and it just doesn't work. So here's the question I have for you. What are you filling your life with? What are you filling those empty spots, those voids with? You know, Paul in Philippians chapter four, verse eight said, here's what you should fill your life with. He said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, 
Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you've learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. That's it. When you fill your life with anything other than God, it will not be peace, it will be chaos. But he brings peace. You know, a friend of mine borrowed a camper, and he was really trying to do the right thing. He wanted to fill it up with gas, but he got mixed up between the water and the gas, and so he filled the gas tank with water. Now, I cannot tell you how the end of the story went because it was not good. All I can tell you is it doesn't work. And here's the point. Whenever you try to fill your life with anything other than God, it will be a disaster. And I don't want that for you. I have just learned that every empty spot, every void, every lack that you feel in your life, please let God fill it because only he can. If you don't, it will lead to chaos. But if you do, it leads to peace. And we'd love to pray with you about that today. So why not call us at 1-855-759-0700. And we have this great resource called Answered Prayer. Maybe you need prayer in your life and how to figure that out. This is for you today. Now, we're going to be right back with another segment of The Movement. The Name of God, a new teaching from Gordon Robertson. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Gain important insights into the protection available to you in the name of God. Discover how God is our healer, our provider, and the one who gives us peace. Plus, see exciting true stories of God's providence in the lives of real people. You get the answer to everything. And that answer will never leave you. The Name of God, available now. I was walking by a gentleman and he was sitting on the ground on the curb and so I just stopped and I said hey how you doing how how are things going and we got into a conversation and as we talked I found out that he actually believed in Jesus uh, long ago hadn't really been um, living a life fully devoted to the Lord but as we talked I noticed that he was kind of going like this and he was just oh doing this lots and I said hey uh, what's wrong with your jaw and he said, um, I just have a lot of pain. I've had a lot of surgeries on my jaw and I actually have pins in my jaw. And so I've just had major problems and I'm in constant pain. I said, wow, um, well, hey, you're my brother in Christ. I was just wondering, we believe in a God that heals. Could I pray for your healing for your jaw? And he said, yes. So I reached out my hand and I just put it gently on his jaw. And I just began to pray the most um, gentlest prayer just asking the Lord to completely heal him and then when I was done we continued our conversation and as we were talking I noticed he started to do this and he started to do it again and we were just having this really deep conversation about life and about God and about things that were going on in his life and he kept on rubbing his his jaw and after about the 12th time I said what's going on with your jaw you keep moving around he goes oh, it's just that's the weirdest thing. I've just got no pain anymore. I'm like, you have no pain in your jaw? I said, feel it around. And he, he went like this and he went like this. And he goes, I have no pain. And he's like, I always have pain. And I'm like, praise God. I'm like, he hears you. He sees you. He's healing your jaw. And we were able to talk and he was able to, we prayed again. And he just um, really saw how the Lord was, was calling him back into intimacy with him. So amazing when we step out and we take that risk to pray for people, to speak to them about Jesus, to call them out and remind them of who they are. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him, at my right hand. I will not be shaken.
And you know, I love that reminder that God uses ordinary people just like you and I to do really extraordinary things when we give him control. You're right on. And I love that this is happening in Canada, all across our nation. People are just being released to share the gospel, you know, because they're letting God lead their life. Yeah, you know, I think for a lot of people, they think, well, God could never use me. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because you have parts of your life filled with other things. Right. And what I'm learning is that it's not just releasing those things, it's actually filling your life with God things. Yeah, well, that's so true. And I, in our family story that I've shared, my oldest son would say that he tried to be free of addiction. He wanted free of addiction for many years, but he wasn't willing to actually let God take control of his life. It's one thing to get rid of something. It's another thing to let God give you what he wants to give you. And when he did, man, his whole life changed. Yeah, because it's not just about emptying, yeah. it's about filling. Yeah. And that goes to every area of our life, not just the things we struggle with, it goes to our time and our talent and our treasure. And really, that's all we want for you. You know, I think a lot of people, when they think about serving God or following God, they think of the things they're going to lose or the things that are gonna be taken away. Can I just remind you of something? that God actually is going to fill those places with something even better. You don't lose, you gain. And this is the message that we at 700 Club Canada want to promote to everyone around the world. And so if you'd like to partner with us for only $20 a month, you can. And in return, we'd love to give you this thank you gift, the name of God. So please call 1-855-759-0700 and partner with us in this great ministry. Thank you for that. That's a great reminder, Bill. God has so much more to give us than we could even imagine to ask for, right? Yeah, we're not gonna lose anything. Right. We're gonna gain so much. So, so good, powerful. that's where prayer comes in. Absolutely. You know, Jocelyn sent a request, please pray for my husband to be free from his gambling addiction. Yes, we yes. will pray for and that. And replace it with something else, yes. whatever that need is. And Suzanne asked us that we'd pray that the medication from the doctor would work to help restore mm -hmm. her mind. And I'm gonna pray that God's peace would fill your mind. Yeah, that's good. And so let's just pray. And so Father, I thank you that you are a good God. And when you ask us to give up something, it's simply because you wanna replace it with something better. We don't have to hold on, cling to these things that destroy us, lead us to chaos, but we can let go and trust you, knowing that you have so much more. And so I pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus that people would understand that the more is for them, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you have a prayer request, there's a need in your life. We are here 24 seven. That's the strength of this ministry, 700 Club Canada, is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, people, yes. our prayer partners are ready to serve you. Here, I wanna leave you with this verse, Psalm 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never Never, never let the righteous be shaken. That's right. Thanks for watching today. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.